Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. Ismael and Israel are two characters of great significance in the Bible, however, in today's world, many people are completely unaware of their lineages. In the previous video, we discussed the twelve tribes of Ismael, exploring their origin, where they dwelled, and their identity in antiquity. Many of you had questions about the twelve tribes of Israel. So, in this video, we will delve into the origin of the twelve tribes of Israel, their names, and, most significantly, the symbols associated with them, along with the history of the family that played a pivotal role in human history, the family of Abraham. We invite you to show your support by liking and sharing this video with those who also want to deepen their knowledge of the tribes of Israel. That said, we invite you to watch another video from our channel. Who are the 12 tribes of Israel? The tribes of Israel constitute clans of Hebrew descent that, according to the Christian Bible, originated from the lineage of Jacob, one of the key Jewish patriarchs. The lineage begins with Abraham, passes to his son Isaac, and then to his grandson Jacob. We will focus our attention on the genealogy and family of Jacob. Jacob had four wives, two wives, Rachel and Leah, and two concubines, Bilhah and Zilpah. In total, Jacob had thirteen children, meaning twelve sons and one daughter. From these twelve sons, the twelve tribes of Israel originated. Now, we will explore each of these tribes, starting with the firstborn, Reuben. In the image, there is a circle with the symbols of the twelve tribes of Israel, with the menorah in the center, which was the candelabrum of the temple in Jerusalem and the most significant symbol of the entire people of Israel, even more important than the Star of David. In the center, above, is the tribe of Reuben, whose symbol resembles a sun but actually represents mandrakes, which are fruits mentioned in Genesis 30 verse 14 when Reuben gathered mandrakes for his mother, Leah. The name of the tribe, Reuven, results from the combination of two words that mean, behold, a son, as Reuben was Leah's firstborn. Another son of Leah is Judah, whose name in Hebrew, Yehuda, means, praise, or, to praise. From the tribe of Judah came some of the most prominent kings of the Israelite people, such as King David. For this reason, in some depictions, the tribe is symbolized by a crown or King David's harp. However, the most significant symbol is actually the Lion of Judah. But what is the connection between the tribe of Judah and the Lion? The image of the Lion is related to Judah due to a prophecy found in the book of Genesis, which describes the blessing given by Jacob to his sons, destined to become leaders of the twelve tribes of Israel. In this blessing, Jacob blesses Judah as, Gerariah, likening him to a young lion. In this context, Jacob portrays Judah as a symbol of strength and leadership. He predicted that the royal lineage and the role of legislator would be intrinsically linked to Judah, and the leadership of the entire nation of Israel would emanate from this tribe. Later, King David and his descendants, including the famous King Solomon, belonged to the tribe of Judah, further solidifying the importance of this tribe in the history of Israel. This explains the evolution of the tribe's symbol into the lion, which, by extension, also became the emblem of the entire city of Jerusalem, as it was located within the territory of the tribe of Judah. The flag of Jerusalem displays the Lion of Judah in the center, with the inscription, Jerusalem, in Hebrew, pronounced as, Yerushalayim, above. This area retains the name of the tribe of Judah to this day, known as the Judean Mountains. Furthermore, the predominant religion of the people of Israel today is Judaism, which also derives its name from Judah. Another son of Leah, called Simeon, which means, he who listens, gave rise to the tribe symbolized by the tower and walls of the city of Shechem, Sichem. Today, if we look for this city on the map, it is identified as Nablus. However, the reason for the association with a tower and walls is related to the fact that the tribe of Simeon played a role in the destruction of the city of Shechem. Of the twelve sons of Jacob, each gave rise to one of the tribes of Israel. When the tribes returned from slavery in Egypt and spent forty years wandering in the desert, they received lands in the land of Israel. 
The territory assigned to Simeon was within the territory of the tribe of Judah, which received a significantly larger portion of land. Over time, the tribe of Simeon eventually disappeared, likely absorbed by the much larger surrounding tribe, namely the tribe of Judah. Now about the tribe of Levi, the name Levi derives from Livwi, which means, to accompany. This tribe stands out from the others due to its special function, being chosen to perform services dedicated to God. This involved the care of the temple in Jerusalem, musical performances, maintenance, and within the tribe of Levi, there was the family of the Kohen, who served as priests in the temple of Jerusalem. This is why Joshua 13 verse 33 states, But to the tribe of Levi, Moses had given no inheritance. The Lord, the God of Israel, is their inheritance, as he said to them. Therefore, God was the inheritance of the tribe of Levi, and for this reason, they did not receive a portion of land in Israel during the division of the land among the tribes. In fact, although they seem to lack a territorial inheritance, we understand that they received the greatest inheritance of all, which was a direct connection to God. The symbol of the tribe of Levi is the breastplate of the high priest, which displayed twelve precious or semi-precious stones, each representing one of the twelve tribes of Israel because the service they performed for God encompassed the entire people. This symbolizes the spiritual importance of the tribe of Levi in connecting the people to God through their duties in the temple. The next son, Zvolan or Zebulun, has a name with a charming meaning, as it derives from Zevd, which in Hebrew means, gift, and can be translated as, one who was gifted. The symbol of the tribe of Zvolan is a boat because they were allocated in a region surrounded by seas, the Sea of Galilee on one side and the Mediterranean Sea on the other. Their proximity to the sea made a boat an appropriate symbol for them. When the land of Israel was divided among the twelve tribes about 3,200 years ago, each tribe had the task of physically conquering its territory. The tribe of Zvolan, Zebulun, is mentioned as one of those that more easily conquered their territory, proving themselves as a tribe of warriors and fighters. Another son of Leah that was not mentioned earlier is Issachar, which today is pronounced as Issachar, but in Biblical Hebrew, it is pronounced Issachar. The name Issachar derives from Satcher, which means payment or is even a word used for salary in modern times. So, the name means, God is my payment, or, payment from God. The symbol of the tribe of Issachar is the moon, the star, and the sun. This is because of the description in the first book of Chronicles, which states that the sons of Issachar were experts in the science of times and knew what Israel should do. Having members of the tribe of Issachar who understood astronomy was of great importance at the time. This means that the members of this tribe understood not only the sun, the moon, and the stars but also the counting of time according to the lunar calendar. To this day, in the Jewish world, the calendar remains lunar, and the biblical festivals still follow lunar months. Therefore, the entire people of Israel depended on the time counting carried out by these specialists from the tribe of Issachar. Now, let's talk about Rachel's sons. She had two sons, but, in reality, more than two tribes will emerge from them. I'll explain how this happens, but we'll start with her firstborn, called Yusef, known in English as Joseph. Yusef originates from the term Leasif, which means, to add. The symbol of the tribe of Yusef is sheaves of wheat, due to the visions that Joseph had and also the connection with the wheat of Egypt, a reference to Joseph in Egypt. However, the tribe of Joseph ended up splitting into two, Manasseh and Ephraim, resulting in one tribe becoming two. You might be wondering how the number of twelve tribes is maintained if two tribes don't receive territories, the tribe of Joseph, which split into Manasseh and Ephraim, and the tribe of Levi, which didn't receive a territory. The answer is that these two tribes didn't receive lands, but the division of lands among the tribes was done in a way that the total number of tribes remains at twelve. The other son of Rachel is named Benjamin, or in Hebrew, Binyamin, which means, son of the right hand. The symbol of the tribe of Benjamin is a wolf, a reference to the blessing given to him in Genesis 49 verse 27. 
In the division of lands, Benjamin received the city of Jerusalem, the most significant of all. Although their territory was small, theoretically, the tribe of Benjamin was given Jerusalem and its surroundings. However, in practice, they couldn't conquer the city, which remained in the hands of the Jebusites until it was conquered by David, who was from the tribe of Judah. Therefore, in practice, the city of Jerusalem ended up under the rule of the tribe of Judah. Despite having one of the smallest territories among the tribes, the territory of Benjamin retained its name throughout history to this day. To this day, the municipality of Benjamin is located very close to Jerusalem, maintaining the historical connection to the tribe of Benjamin. Now, let's talk about the two sons of Bilhah, one of Jacob's concubines. The first son we'll discuss is Dan, whose name literally means, judge. This tribe has two distinct symbols, one of them is scales, representing justice, in line with Dan's name, which means, judge. Furthermore, the verse in Genesis 49 verse 16 and 17 states, Dan will judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. However, the same verse in 17 mentions, Dan will be a snake beside the road, a viper along the path, that bites the horse's heels so that its rider tumbles backward. Therefore, the tribe of Dan adopted the snake as another symbol due to this biblical passage. As for the territory of the tribe of Dan, in the division of the lands of Israel, they received a region that corresponds to the area of Greater Tel Aviv today. However, in practice, they never managed to conquer this territory as it was occupied by the Philistines, known for their military prowess. Therefore, the tribe of Dan was forced to find an alternative location to settle and ended up in the far north of Israel, in the region bordering Lebanon. Despite this, to this day, when Israelis refer to Gush Dan or the Dan area, they are pointing to Greater Tel Aviv, even though the tribe never occupied that area in practice. The territory of the tribe of Dan, despite settling in the far north of Israel, retains its name to this day, highlighting historical continuity. The other son of Bilhah, named Naphtali, has a name that means, my struggle, or, my hardship. The symbol of the tribe of Naphtali is a gazelle due to the verse in Genesis 49 verse 21, which says, Naphtali is a doe set free that bears beautiful fawns. In the division of the land, the tribe of Naphtali received a territory near the Sea of Galilee in northern Israel. This region was strategically important as it hosted some of the most significant trade routes of the time, connecting to Damascus, Tyre, and Sidon. As a result, the tribe of Naphtali enjoyed abundance in many aspects, including economically. This prosperity is reflected in the blessing given by Moses to the tribe of Naphtali, as found in the book of Deuteronomy, and of Naphtali he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor, and full of the blessing of the Lord, possessed the lake and the south. Deuteronomy 33 verse 23. The last of Jacob's wives, Zilpah, also had two sons. One of them, called Gad, has a name that means, luck or, fortune. When the land of Israel was divided, the tribe of Gad received the region known as, Gilead, located on the other side of the Jordan River, corresponding to the present-day territory of Jordan. For this reason, the symbol of the tribe of Gad is a tent, representing the nomadic lifestyle of the tribe, which involved shepherding herds and frequently moving to tend to their sheep and animals. The tribe of Asher, whose name derives from the Hebrew word Asher, meaning happiness or blessed, has the olive tree as its symbol. This symbolic choice is related to the blessing given to the tribe of Asher, which includes olive oil, as found in Deuteronomy 33 verse 24, and of Asher he said, Most blessed of sons be Asher, let him be the favorite of his brothers, and let him dip his foot in oil. The reference to olive oil and the olive tree symbolize the blessing and prosperity of the tribe of Asher. The blessings also mention the abundance of food, bread from Asher shall be rich, and he shall yield royal dainties, Genesis 49 verse 20. This underscores the wealth and plenty that the tribe of Asher would enjoy. I hope it has been informative to learn more about the tribes and the people of Israel. If you are interested in learning more about other peoples or specific topics, feel free to mention them in the comments.
May God bless you all. See you soon.